wasikiwe kwa hivyo ningependa kuchukua nafasi hii kuwakaribisha kwa ibada yetu 
Naomba tusimame kwa siku zetu ili tuweze kufungua kwa maombi. Tuombe. Baba wetu kwa jina safi na mwanao Yesu Kristo na kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu, tunakupa sifa jinsi umekuwa mwema kutupa nafasi ya kuingia ikaluni mbako ili tuweze kukuabudu. Tunakushukuru Bwana kwa muda mfupi ambao tumekuwa nao kwa kukuvusha mwaka huu na kuingia mwaka mpya wa 2024. Bwana sifa na utukufu tunakurudishia wewe kwa sababu ya utukufu wako. Umekuwa mwaminifu ndani ya maisha yetu. Bwana hata kudhihirisha wazi kwetu kwamba mbingu itiari kwetu kwa baraka ambazo umeandaa. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya anga nzuri, baraka ya mvua ambayo umetubariki nayo kwa mwaka huu. Bwana tunasema sisi ni wabarikiwa. Tuko tiari Bwana kwenenda na ulinzi wako, kwenenda na uongozi wako kwa sababu unastahili pokea sifa kwa ajili ya kanisa hili watumishi wako jinsi umewaandaa bwana kwa ajili ya neno lako kwa ajili ya maisha yetu wanapotulisha neno lako sifa na utukufu zikakurudie saidi ya yote mwaka huu tunaomba kwamba baba neno ambalo tunapokea hatutakuwa wasikizaji tu bali tutakuwa watendaji kwa sababu ya utukufu wa jina lako uinuliwe uhimidiwe maana hakuna Mungu mwingine kama wewe tunakupa sifa kwa kila mmoja wetu ambaye na ako njiani kuingia mahali hapa Bwana tunamfunika na damu yako takatifu kwamba anapotembea arakisha nyayo zake ili anapoingia hapa na kubarikiwa sifa na utukufu zikakurudie. Pokea sifa kwa ajili ya maisha yetu. Bwana kwa kila mmoja wetu jinsi umekusudia kwa baraka ya mwaka huu. Tunaipokea kwa shukurani kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu. Baba kanisa hili tunalifunika na damu yako takatifu. Viongozi wote tunawafunika na damu yako. Washiriki wote tunawafunika na damu yako Bwana. Asante kwa kila mmoja wetu kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu. Pokea sifa kwa sababu ya neno lako. Pokea sifa kwa sababu ya u- u- uongozaji wako Jehova. Kila mmoja ambaye anasimama mahali hapa kwa ajili ya kuhudumu kwa ajili ya mwaka huu, tunambarikisha mkononi mwako kwamba utamlinda, utamtenda mema sababu we ni Mungu. Asante kwa ajili ya waimbaji, asante kwa ajili ya watoto, asante kwa ajili ya vijana, asante kwa ajili ya wamama, asante kwa ajili ya wazee. Bwana kanisa lote tunaiweka mkononi mwako chini ya ulinzi wako mwaka huu kwamba tutatembea nawe kwa sababu ya ukuu wako pokea sifa na utukufu maana ni zako kwa Yesu Kristo naomba na hata kuamini amen tuketi kwa dakika kidogo kisha nichukue nafasi hii kuwakaribisheni nyinyi wote kwa ajili ya ibada ya siku hii ya leo tarehe moja mwaka 2024 karibu wasikizaji wote wale ambao wako online na wakaribisha kwamba 20 24 tutembee pamoja. Kwa hivyo nitaenda direct kwa our scripture reading. Ambayo inatoka kwa kita, katika kitabu cha 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Verse 13 kisha tutaruka mpaka chapter 6 tusome verse 1 na verse 2 chapter 5 verse 13 nitasoma neno la Mungu linasema hivi maana ikiwa tumerukwa na akili zetu ni kwa ajili ya Mungu au ikiwa tunazo akili zetu timamu ni kwa ajili yenu chapter number 6 verse 1 Nasi tukitenda kazi pamoja naye twawasihi msipokee neema ya Mungu bure kwa maana asema wakati uliokubalika ulio nalikusikia siku ya wokofu nalikusaidia tasama wakati uliokubalika ndio sasa tasama siku ya wokofu ndio sasa tuombe Baba wetu kwa jina safi la mwanao Yesu Kristo na kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu tunakupa sifa kwa ajili ya neno ambalo liko mbele yetu. Tunalipokea kwa shukurani kwa ajili ya mtumishi wako jinsi umemwandaa kwa ajili ya kuja kutulisha. Bwana tunamfunika na damu yako takatifu, malaika wako wakamsingire anapotulisha neno lako liwe la manufaa katika maisha yetu, iwe ya kudubariki, ya kutujenga, zaidi yote ya kubadilisha mioyo zetu ili tukaenende na mapenzi yako pokea sifa na utukufu maana ni zako 
kwa Yesu Kristo naomba na hata kuamini amen kwa hivyo kwa nafasi hiyo ningependa tu tusimame kwa miguu zetu ili tumkaribishe mtumishi wa Mungu kwa makofi mazuri anapokuja 1 2 3 Tupika makofi vizuri tafadhali Pika makofi mpaka afike hapa tafadhali Karibu sana bishop Karibu Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Let us pray. Baba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo na kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu tunakuja machoni pako tarehe moja siku ya Jumatatu mwezi wa Januari mwaka 2024 kusema asante tena kwa kutunukia heshima ya kuona na kufika mwaka mwingine. Baba uishie milele ninasema asante kwa kanisa lako nikifunika kanisa hili kwa damu Yesu Kristo nikiomba kwamba Mungu ishe milele ukawa mlinzi wa wote ndani ya hili kanisa ewe Bwana uwasaidie katika maisha ya kila siku Bwana ukawapa uzima ukakutana na mahitaji yao sawa sawa na utajiri wako mbinguni ninawaombea wote ambao wamefika kwa ibada hii na wale ambao wako manyumbani na popote wanasikiliza neema yako iwe juu ya maisha yao Ninatangaza mwaka ulio na kibali cha Mungu, mwaka ulio na uongozi utokao mbinguni. Jehova uenende pamoja nasi ni kwa sababu unatupenda na sisi tunachagua kukupenda wewe. Ninataka kusimamisha kila minuko na uongo na ujanja na uharibifu wa adui shetani na mipango zake zote katika china la Yesu Kristo. Ninaachilia neema ya mwaka mpya, ninaachilia neema ya kuongozwa na Mungu, ninaachilia neema ya kusimamishwa na Bwana. Asante kwa neno lako, asante kwa uongozi wako, asante kwa usimamizi wako. Roho mtakatifu wa Mungu chukua usukani. Ninatangaza kwamba neema ya Mungu itatembea kutoka madhabahu haya kuingia maeneo yote kaskazini mashariki kusini na magharibi kwa utukufu wa jina lako baba jitwalie sifa na utukufu kwa ajili ya watoto wetu kwa ajili ya vijana wetu kwa ajili ya wamama wetu na kwa ajili ya wazee wetu baba utubariki kwa nafasi hii ambapo tumekuja kusema Hatuendi popote mwaka huu. Tumekuja kujipeana kwako mfalme ya kwamba Jehovah ututangulie na uende mbele zetu na sisi tutayari kukufuata Bwana. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo aliye Bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yetu na watu wa Mungu tuseme Amen. Pigie Bwana Yesu makofi mazuri. Thank you Jesus. Tukae uweponi mwa Bwana. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Nataka ni mpe Mungu wetu shukurani tele ambaye amefanya siku hii tena tukutane na tuje tumwabudu Mungu. Nimefurahi sana kwa Mungu kutupa uzima na Mungu pia kutupa wokovu wake kwa neema zake mwenyewe. Nimefurahi kuona dada wetu Milka, missionary wetu Mungu kukulinda mpaka leo. Asante kwa kujua kwamba mwaka unaanzwa na Mungu. Bwana majeshi asifiwe. Uh, tumeitwa kwa sababu ya kufanya kazi na kuwa tenda kazi na Mungu na ni baraka. Njia nzuri ambayo unastahili kuanza nayo mwaka kama huu ni kuanza katika neno la Mwenyezi Mungu. Ninapolileta neno la Mungu nataka niseme asante kwa sababu Bwana ni mwema na amenisaidia na ameniwezesha kufika hapa nimefika. Amen. Uh, mikononi mwangu ushuhuda mzuri ambao nilio nao ni kwamba tayari nimeanza mwaka mwingine tena katika neno la Mungu jina la Yesu lipewe sifa wakati ambapo nilipeana maisha yangu kwa Yesu mwaka wa 1987 ilikuwa Jumapili tarehe 
Yesu aliweza kunifikia hapa 64 Stadium na nikasema ndio kwa Yesu. Ninaweza sema wazuwazi ya kwamba si kujua ninafanya maamuzi kwa jambo gani. Lakini leo hii naweza tazama nyuma na nikasema ninajua ni kitu gani nilisema ndio kwake. Praise the name of the Lord. Kuanzia hapo niliweza kuelezwa kwamba ukitaka kuwa Mkristo mzuri katika hii safari ya imani ni lazima upende Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. Kwa moyo wako wote penda Mungu. Jambo la pili nikaambiwa kwamba lazima uwe mtu wa maombi. Uwezi bila kuomba. Lazima uwe mtu wa kutafuta Mungu. Ukiamuka ukilala ambia Mungu nisaidie. Na nikashika hiyo maneno ikaingia ndani yangu nikiwa na miaka 14 kutokea mahali pale nikaamba kwamba you must love the word of god kwa sababu neno la Mungu ndio chakula chetu cha kiroho kama wakristo basi hiyo ilinifanya nikawa na hamu kubwa ya kuendelea kutamani kutembea katika haya maneno ninakumbuka mwaka mmoja niliweza kujaribu kuangalia neno la Mungu na ninafungua macho ninaangalia ndani ninatoka ninaenda but Nikawa si shiki kila ambacho kinitakana kiingie kwa neno la Mungu kutoka kwa hii Biblia ndani yangu vizuri. Nikaanza kujiuliza maswali njia gani ninaweza kufaulu katika kuingia neno la Mungu kwa njia iliyo safi. Nilipatana na kitabu moja ambacho kilikuwa kimeandikwa na mwandishi mmoja kwa jina Raf Mahoni. Raf Mahoni alikuwa anaandika vitabu ya uh, anaandika messages from different parts of the Bible na alikuwa na magazine moja ameita Acts. Yeye ndiye ameandika kitabu kinaitwa kwamba The Shepherd's Staff. Inaitwanga fimbo ya mchungaji. Nimekuta wachungaji wako nayo all over this world. Dunia hii yote kuanzia India, ukienda katika America, uenda Africa, have been in all these areas na nimeona watumishi wa Mungu wako na hii kitabu inaitwa The Shepherd's Staff. Fimbo ya mchungaji ni kitabu ambacho kama Biblia na kimebeba mambo mengi sana ya kukusaidia kujua neno la Mungu. So nilipata magazine moja ambayo ilikuwa imeandikwa nyuma yake. Vile Mkristo anaweza kusoma neno la Mungu kwa mwaka mzima. Na ungeona Januari tarehe moja imeandikwa hapo labda Genesis chapter 1. Ukienda labda baada ya Genesis 1 inaenda labda Psalms 1. Na inaenda labda Revelation na Matthew kidogo. Na ukiunganisha hayo maneno yote pamoja kwa mwaka mzima una uwezo wa kusoma neno la Mungu. Nilikuwa nimeingia Bible school Kisumu. Nikasema this is exactly what I'm going to do. Na mwaka uliofuata ninakumbuka it was 1997. Nikashika hicho hicho kitabu cha Raf Maho na I still have it even today. Na nikasema kwamba I will go with this book pole pole to see what is in the word of God. Niliweza kufanya hivyo na Mungu alinisaidia niwe safari niwe wapi i managed to check in the word of god katika biblia yangu moja nayopenda sana niko na it was my first version ya kiingereza inaitwa good news version iko kwa ofisi yangu hii mpaka sasa nilipomaliza ile nilisikia kumwambia munga asante kunisaidia at least kuona ukurasa moja, mbili, tatu katika biblia mwanzo mpaka ufunua yohana kabla hiyo Nilikuwa nimesikia kwamba ukisoma Biblia yote unakuwa mwenda simu. <laughs> Mimi sikuwa wazimu, mi sikuwa nako nikiwa wazimu. In fact nilisikia kuendelea kupenda na kutamani Mungu sana. Bwana asifiwe. Kama umeshasikia a myth that says ukisoma Biblia yote utakuwa mwenda, uwezi kuwa mwenda. Kwanza ndio unakuwa mzuri sana by the way that is part of the message of today. Kwa sababu kuna time tunaonekana kama wazimu lakini ni wazimu kwa ajili ya Mungu. Bwana amejesha inuliwe. Bas hiyo haikuweza kuweka sana iliniwacha bado na maswali maswali. Ilikuwa mwaka wa 2007. Mungu alinipa nafasi kuhudhuria kongamano moja la wachungaji na viongozi wa makanisa kutoka East and Central African countries. Pale Brackenhurst, Limuru, this country. Na wahubiri walikuwa hapo wahubiri mbalimbali katika institute ilikuwa inaitwa East African Institute. Na tulikuwa hapo ubiri toka wote mention the moderators and presidents of our, of our conventions in this region. They were there. And kila mwalimu these American tutors kila mhubiri alikuja na ujumbe wake 
kuna wale walifundisha sisi about preaching kuna wale walifundisha about biblical interpretation na mmoja wao yeye alikuwa anazungumza habari za maombi ninamuenzi sana katika maisha yangu kwa sasa ni mzee ambaye ako na miaka themanini na kitu kuna uwezekano hata wai kanyaga ili bara la Afrika tena tulikuwa tumekaa watu kama mia tatu chini tunasikiliza vile unanisikiliza sahi lakini maamuzi ni yako mwenyewe praise the name of the lord aliongea neno rais sana akasema he has been a student of the word of god since 1977 hakupata nafasi ya kuingia theological institution but yeye kama mwalimu na mkurugenzi na professor wa, wa katika vyuo vikuu akafanya maamuzi kwa sababu nimeshikika na kazi na nimeshika na mambo hivi mimi binafsi i'm going to be a student of the word of god each and every day nitaingia kwa neno la Mungu not because of just reading for the sake of preaching but feeding from the word of god na akataja kitu kilicho ni bariki moyo wangu ya kwamba with three chapters a day and five chapters every sunday you are in a position if you start on january 1 by 28th december you will be done in the whole bible tulikuwa vile wewe uko hivi hakuna mtu anashurutisha mwingine hakuna mtu anakuambia fanya lingine seated down there i made a decision that god thank you for passing such like message to me today come next year i will be a student of your word and i made a decision na nikasema mungu kwa siku zozote utanipa uzima nitakuwa nikiingia kwa neno lako not for any other thing neno lako linipe nguvu za kila siku why am i saying so leo hii niko na biblia ambayo ni ya mwaka mwingine bwana asifiwe wengi unasema umeanza mwaka mpya i thank god ya kwamba mimi amenipa mwaka mpya sio mwaka wa maneno mengine sio mwaka wa mazungumzo mengine bali ni mwaka wa kutembea katika neno la Mungu na kuendelea kuimarika katika neno la Bwana. Nikiimarika katika mambo mengine imejaa lawama na maswala ina Mungu. I am ready for the word of God because the word of God remains my strength, remains my power, remains my everything that I need in life. Hallelujah. And from the year 2007 I began the journey and I started and that Bible is there with me. Uh, a day like today ambayo Mwenyezi Mungu ameweka mbele zetu hakuna kitu kizuri naweza fanya kando na kumwambia Mungu asante kwa siku nyingine na kumwambia Bwana niko tayari kwa neno lako it is my joy to show you what i'm doing uh, as uh, each and every day if you look in this bible Bwana asifiwe i don't know kama macho yake anaweza hapa i have a bible in my hands ready for the year 2024 Nimeenda kwamba my 2024 and it is my 18th bible from the year 2007 I call it feed from the word bible and I start every morning with Psalms with Psalms 119 verse 18 ambayo inasema O oh Lord open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law After that I start Genesis 1 Today being a Monday guess what I've already walked through Genesis chapter 1 chapter 2 and chapter 3 and this morning I stand strongly before you to say I am blessed I count myself a very blessed person and very much privileged in life and I see myself the other day I talked about being blessed and i count myself a blessed person bwana majesha asifiwe i'm trying to imagine one time one day wakati ambapo watoto wangu they will receive a gift from me and the best gift they can receive from me is the bible katika record ya bible hizo nimeweka biblia moja ambayo ninasema msichana wangu wa kwanza akiolewa atapata gift kutoka kwa dadi wake biblia ambayo alisoma mwaka mzima kwa maisha yake. Na huwa naandika ndani penye niko na popote ninapita. And I'm trying to imagine siku moja labda ako katika mji wa Nairobi na anafungua mahali ambapo panaonyesha 
Your dad was in Nairobi this day in the word of God. Kijana wangu akioa, I have a gift for him. My Bible. Mustana wangu akiolewa, I have a gift for her. My Bible. Kijana wangu akioa, I have a gift for him. My Bible. I don't give these gifts. He is where's Peana. Guess what? What about my grandchildren? All my grandchildren watakuwa na Biblia ambayo babu yao alisoma mwaka fulani. What about my great grandchildren? Watakuja kuona Biblia ambayo baba yao alisoma mwaka fulani. Ikifika hapo I know I am a blessed person. Unaweza niuliza what has happened? Uh, the best Nimeshanga mnasemanga provision ya Mungu. God does not just give things bora kupeana. Kile Mungu huwa anataka, anataka uchukue hatua ya imani. Ukishachukua hatua ya imani, Mungu anajua cha kufanya. Nilipoanza hii safari nilitumia Biblia yangu yenye ilikuwa nimetumia seminary. Kwa nimeisoma soma, nimeisoma soma na ikawa hivyo. Na Unajua ukisoma msoma bila hata leo tayari katika chapter 1 2 3 nimeichafua properly sababu i note things i mark things in my bible eh i ninaona vitu vingi ambavyo nimeandika tayari kuna some pages nimesema amen nikaambia Mungu i want kila mwaka unapofika ninataka biblia mpya yenye ambayo unaonaje ukienda nyumbani na unapewa ugali ya jana kukula asubuhi ama saa saba wanaume unapigia mama makofi naona mwanaume mmoja pala sema hii hapana hii hapana unataka ugal fresh niliambia Mungu every year i need a new bible na nikasema i trust you for a new bible nataka kuambia kwa hii miaka 18 ni mwaka mmoja tu nilinunua biblia but hii miaka mingine yote Mungu kwa njia yake na kwa uwezo wake huwa anahakisha i have a bible and i have a new bible here Bwana majesha asifiwe. Pigia Bwana Yesu makofu mazuri. I'll be preaching through this Bible this year na utapata ujumbe kutoka kwa Mungu through this year. Na ninashukuru Mungu kunipa nafasi I share this testimony with you. Uko kwa hii baada leo na unasema kwamba Mungu ukinipa uzima mwaka huu hata nami nitajaribu kujikakamua kutembea katika Biblia mwaka usisemi ufanye kama mimi kwa sababu by the way I don't do this because I am a pastor ninafanya hii because I'm a Christian unajua ndio rais sana ujaribu kusema hiyo ni ya mapasta hapana si ya mapasta na mbuani mimi ni mkristo kabla kuwa bishop wako amen huko kwa hii bado unasema kwamba Mungu ukinisaidia mwaka huu nitajaribu hebu ni kuone ni kuombe simama kwa mguu wako Okay. All right. Rudisha chini tena mkono. Naomba uinamishe macho yako mbele za Bwana. Unasema Mwenyezi Mungu mwaka huu kinisaidia. Hiyo ndio sababu ulienda shule. Hiyo ndio sababu una macho. Iko umri mwingine hata macho inashindwanga kuona. Unasema baba nitajaribu kukua kwa Biblia hii mwaka huu. Hebu nione tena mkono wako Bwana. Alright, ninashukuru Mungu. Baba kwa jina la Yesu na kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu ninakushukuru kwa sababu ya hawa watoto wako. Ambao anasema kwamba Mungu ukiwasaidia mwaka huu watatembea kwa Biblia kwa neno lako. Nami ninawaombea Mungu wa Israeli washike mkono, wajalie neema ili watembee kwa neno lako ili Bwana aliwasaidie kushinda majaribu ya dunia hii. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo mkozi wetu maomba na watu wa Mungu tuseme eme tukae sababu ambayo imefanya nikauliza mara mbili nilipouliza mara ya kwanza niliona mikono zote juu sasa ndiyo nikasema funga macho alafu inue mkono na Mungu amenisaidia mkono wa kwanza wenye ulifanya juu ulikuwa mkono wa Enoch na kwa sababu aliinua mkono wa kwanza kwa sisi sote i have a bible for you Come and receive. Munga kupe neema mwaka mpya vile umetamani na utembee katika Biblia the new year.
May the Lord bless you. And I have this for you also. As a guide to help you into that, may the Lord richly bless you. Wengine wote tembea katika neno la Bwana, utaona Bwana akikushindania, akikuepusha mambo haya yote ambaye ni ya dunia hii. I am also uh, discovering that tunawashirika wetu ambao mpaka sasa hawajapata kalenda zao na kuanzia hapa tutaanza kupatiana kalenda kwa wenyeji peke eh, wageni peke yake sababu zenye zimebaki ni kama 100 copies peke yao. Kwa hivyo kama hujai pata kalenda yetu 2024 asante sana asante pastor welcome utahakikisha kwamba umepata baada ya ibada ili ikusaidie nyumbani. Now let me go to the word of God uh, for day 1 of 20 uh, 20 uh, Four. Second Corinthians chapter 5 Verse 13 Ninajua Nelson Uliona Second Corinthians 5 13 Na ukafikiria inamanisha 13 alafu ruke 6 1 and 2 Ilikuwa inamanisha from verse 13 to chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 so let me read with you hiyo ndio naona utamu ya kukutana na mimi before usome yale nimekuandikia <laughs> so i want to read it again na nitasoma pia kwa Kiswahili itusaidie second corinthians chapter 5 verse 13 twende mpaka chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 the Bible ambaye nikonai nasema, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Verse 16. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who, made, who had no sin to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favor, I had you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Niruhusu tu, nipite tena kwa kiswahili kidogo. Ili maandiko hae ya pato kuzapa ndani ya miyose. Kwa sababu, Utajiri siyo vitu vingine ni neno la bwana. Kwa korinza wa kwanza tano, naanza msara wa kumina tatu, kwenye kiswahili hii enye hiko hapa. Inasema hivi mstari wa kumina tatu. Maana ikiwa tumerukwa na akilizetu ni kwa ajili ya mungu. Ayu ikiwa tunazo akilizetu timamu ni kwa ajili yenu. Maana upendo wa kristo, Watubidisha maana tumehukumu tume hivi Ya kwamba mmoja alikufa kwa ajili ya wote 
basi walikufa wote tena alikufa kwa ajili ya wote ili walio hai wasiwe hai tena kwa ajili ya nafsi zao wenyewe hali kwa ajili yake yeye aliyekufa akafufuka kwa ajili yao hata imekuwa sisi tangu sasa hatumjui mtu awaye yote kwa jinzi ya mwili ingawa sisi tumemtambua Kristo kwa njia ya mwili lakini sasa hatumtambui hivi tena hata imekuwa mtu akiwa ndani ya Kristo amekuwa kiumbe kipya ya kale yamepita tazama yamekuwa mapya lakini vyote pia vyatokana na Mungu aliyetupatanisha sisi na nafsi yake kwa Kristo naye alitupa huduma ya upatanisho yani Mungu alikuwa ndani ya Kristo akiupatanisha ulimwengu na nafsi yake asiwahesabie makosa yao naye ametia ndani yetu neno la upatanisho basi tu wajumbe kwa ajili ya Kristo kana kwamba Mungu anasi kwa vinywa vyetu twawaomba wa, twa ninyi kwa ajili ya Kristo mpatanishwe na Mungu yeye asiyejua dhambi alimfanya kuwa dhambi kwa ajili yetu ili sisi tupate kuwa haki ya Mungu katika yeye nasi tukitenda kazi pamoja naye twawasihi msipokee neema ya Mungu bure kwa maana asema wakati uliokubalika na likusikia siku ya kovu ya wokovu na likusaidia tazama wakati uliokubalika ndio sasa tazama siku ya wokovu ndio sasa jina la Yesu lipewe sifa ninaleta kwetu ujumba ambao nimeita our new identity in Christ Jesus thank you for that good amen our new identity in Christ Jesus wakati ambapo tunapata nafasi ya kusikia neno dunia hii na kuruhusiwa tuseme ndio kwa wokovu tunapata kitambulisho kipya machoni pa Mungu sasa hii kitambulisho mpya tumepata our new identity paka inanifanya ninakumbuka siku ile nilipata ID mimi niliangaika sana town hii kupata identity card zilikuwa nyakata ambazo ma chiefs walikuwa wana uwezo na mamlaka sana ambayo chief akisema ndiyo ni ndiyo chief chief akisema la ni la na nilifuata kitambulisho changu kwa muda mrefu mara unajaza form mara unafanya nini na unahitaji ufanye kazi zako za kila siku ukienda chief ameenda kwa mkutano ya rais ukienda nini amefanya ili nisumbua one full year bari nakumbuka siku moja nikaenda hapo na ikajazwa na mzaa aliye nishika mkono akahakikisha hiyo kitambulisho hiyo fomu imejazwa. Angali naonanga angali mzao wa mtaa hapa kamkunji. Nila nikimuona ni nikutana naye na mwambianga wewe ujui. Wewe ni mtu wa maana sana kwa maisha yangu. Wewe ndio ulifanya nikapata kitambulisho ambayo ilikuwa nimefuata kwa mwaka mzima tauni hii. Na huwa napenda nikutana naye paka ikiwezekana akunywe maji kutoka kwangu. Ninakumbuka siku ile nilishika kitambulisho changu. I was very happy. Nilisikia furaha. Nikajisikia kwamba nimekuwa mkenya nimekuwa mtu ambaye hata naye anaweza fanya maendeleo kwa sababu ana ID. Bwana asifiwe. Hebu nione wa Kenya wana vitambulisho hapa. Mna vitambulisho? Unajisikiaje na kitambulisho chako? Unasikia wewe ni mkenya, ni mwananchi, si ndio? Na unaweza fanya maendeleo kwa sababu ya ID. Ndio unaiwekanga vizuri, utaki ipotee. Ndio unaona serikali inasema ukipoteza kuanzia ilikuwa January 1 leo, 2000 ndio upate kitambulisho mpya ingaje tumeweka on hold kidogo. Na hakuna mtu anataka kupoteza. Mtu anataka ajaribu kushikilia sana ili ahakikisha kwamba kitambulisho chake hakipotei. Kwa sababu kutoa 12 mbili kwa sababu ya ID sio mzuri. Kitambulisho ni cha maana. Niko hapa kusema mwaka huu unapoanza neno la Mungu linasema nasi tukipeana maisha yetu ndani ya Yesu tunapata kitambulisho mpya. Tunapata nafasi ya utambulisho mpya. Tunapata nafasi ya kutambuliwa mbele za Mungu na hata mbele za wanadamu in a new identification. Praise the name of Jesus. Mtume Paulo ndiye aliandika hii maandiko. Na aliandika akiwa Jerusalem mwaka miaka ya 55 na 57 after the death of Jesus. Yesu amekufa na amefufuka. Miaka hiyo ndiye aliandika hii barua. Na aliandika kwa sababu ya mambo matatu. Jambo la kwanza tuafamu his ministry. Alitaka the church in Corinth should know that hata na yeye amepewa nafasi ya kufanya kazi ya utume. So he was affirming kwa sababu alipoandika 1 Corinthians 
ilileta maswali mengi yenye haina mwelekeo ni nani huyu ametuandikia barua ya ukali ya aina hii ni nani huyu ana question mambo ya umoja wetu nani ana question mambo ya vyakula vya ibada and so paul writes to say yes i have the authority to write what i've written and receive what i've written in the name of the lord jambo la pili aliandika to defend the authority that he has in Christ Jesus kwa sababu alianza kusema kwamba mitume 12 tuliwajua wewe nawe ni mtume wapi Paul writes to say hata na mimi nilikutana na Yesu Kristo life life kwa barabara ya kwenda Maus na akanifanya mtume wa injili kwa mataifa I have the authority haleluya and Paul finally ukiangalia kulikuwa na shida nyingi sana kuanzia wakati wa Yesu walimu wa uongo Mwana glory babs bwana asifiwe nataka nikwambie walimu wa uongo hawajaisha mpaka leo Walimu wa mahubiri na mafundisho ya uongo bado wako. Na Paulo aliandika hii barua kusema kwamba na waonyeni muwe waangalifu kufuata walimu wa uongo. Take for example. Mwaka kama huu wenye tumeingia mwaka mpya. Muhubiri kama mimi asimame mbele yako. Na mbele yenu amenunua vifagio. Tell your neighbor vifagio. Kifagio ya kufagia nyumba, kifagio ya nyasi na anakuja kwa ibada kama hii na anasema kwamba kila kifagio elfu moja moja na ukinunua hii kifagio hata usimame kwa barabara kimbia mpaka kwa nyumba yako na ufagie nyumba yako yote utakuwa umefalikia matatizo yote ya nyumba huo kweli ni ukweli huo ni uongo kifagio ya nyasi yenye unaweza tupa tu kwa shamba hapo na inanyeshwa na mbwa na inaoza How can it I was forgive your problems your problems na fagiliwa na kumjua Mwenyezi Mungu Ni wangapi tumeona Kenya hii wakinyweshwa mafuta na maji na kunywa mafuta ati ndio itakase yoshi maji ndio ifanye nini hivyo vitu havifanyi chochote wewe tegemea neno la Mungu tegemea Mwenyezi Mungu Paulo aliandika kusema kwamba walimu wa uongo wako na akawa anasema kwamba be warned and be careful They are there waspotoshe sisi katika imani yetu. Alipokuwa anaandika hii maneno mstari mkuu wa Paulo ni chapter 5 verse 20. Na kwa sababu tumesoma chapter 5 na ezapenda uangalie hiyo mstari wa 20 ndio the main coup, the main verse of Paul when he writes second Corinthians. And by the way you need to be informed the second letter that we have it is not actually the second letter. Ila sasa hii yote third letter because kuna second letter ambayo ilipotea na hii sasa ikawa ndiyo third letter verse 20 ndiyo ilikuwa mstari mkuu wa Paulo anasema we are therefore Christ's ambassadors sisi ni mabalozi wa Kristo as though God went making his appeal through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God huo ndiyo mstari mkubwa ulikuwa kwa moyo wa Paulo wa Korinto sisi ni mabalozi wa Yesu and we want you to be reconciled back to Jesus praise the name of the lord we remain not the same that is what i'm saying we do not remain the same when we give our lives to Jesus there are things that change our identity kitambulisho changu kina uwezo wa kusema mimi ni mtu wa wapi mimi nilizaliwa lini mimi ninatoka kwa kabila gani katika nchi ya Kenya hii my kitambulisho can tell all those things Identity tunapata identity mpya ndani ya Kristo. Identity yetu Paulo anasema kwamba inaonekana katika mambo yafuatayo. Jambo la kwanza, Jesus Christ liberates us from sin. Jesus Christ brings liberty from our sins. To be liberated from sin is totally an act of God. Bwana asifiwe Mkristo. This is an act of God to make sure You have liberty. You are liberated totally from the bondage of sin. That is why Paul starts in verse 13 with full submission of God's love. And asema everything that he does it is compelled by the love of God. Ukiangalia mstari wa 11 una unaguza neno fear. Unasema since then we know what is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. But I want you to know what is making Paul to do what is doing is not fear of God no it is love of God 
anasema ni upendo wa Mungu ndio unatushurutisha katika kuyafanya haya jina la Yesu lipe sifa upendo wa Mungu ndani mwetu ndio unatuwezesha tufanye kile tunachofanya everything that Paul did uh, that Paul and his companions did was to honor God hakuwa anafanya mambo tu kwa sababu tu honor God not only did God's fear motivate him but he was motivated by God love unajua ninajua kuna watu ambao sangine huwa anaokoka kwa sababu anaogopa kwenda jehana labda mwinjilisti alihubiri akasema kwamba usipookoka utaenda jehana sasa hiyo inamfanya mimi naogopa kwenda jehana wacha niokoke ile niende binguni hiyo ni a very shaky foundation hiyo ni very shaky foundation na usipochunga inaweza kurudisha tena kwa dhambi sababu kuogopa kuogopa fear can just come in you and after a certain time inatoka so umeshaona hata watu wanatetemekanga kwa sababu ya nini nini na baada ya unaona ni mtu wa kawaida fear can just come in and, and again inaondoka paul anasema it is not fear what compels us to do what we are doing is because we love god praise the name of jesus because we love him christ love compelled their actions the word of compelling eh, inatushurutisha means to hold fast nini inafanya tunashikilia kile tunashikilia tunampenda Mungu the love of christ was con- constraining them to certain courses of action they knew that jesus out of his great love had given up his life for their sakes anasema kwamba ni kristo kwa upendo wake alipeana maisha yake kwa ajili yenu wa korintho mkimpenda Mungu mtamtumikia bila shitatizo lote he had not acted out of his own self seeking Hello brothers and sisters. Do you know sometimes you can follow the things of the Lord because of your self seeking? Eh, ni wewe mwenyewe tu unaona wacha nijaribu hii vitu. Seeking or interest or self selfishness. Ubinafs plan unakusaidia. Jesus had willingly died for all. It is recorded in the scriptures that we have read. Paul akisema kwamba Kristo alikufia kwa hiari watu wote and in my scriptures i've noted watu wote kwa hiari akatoa maisha yake watu wote wawe na uzima praise the name of jesus and because of that anasema kwamba you need to hold fast to this truth first john chapter 3 umandishi wa yohana yohana mwanafunzi aliyependwa na yesu anasema for this is the message you had from the beginning we should love one another why should we love one another because we were loved first before we choose to love as a result of Christ's death for our lives we are also dead to our old lives tunakufa katika ile uovu wetu wa zamani like paul we should no longer live to please ourselves we should spend our lives pleasing christ the word liberal because i'm saying jesus christ liberates us from sin the word liberal means giving or given freely you give or you are given freely you are an open minded person you know what you are doing bwana asifiwe mkristo usipochunga mwaka huu ni rais sana kujaribiwa kufanya mambo labda kwa sababu ya kufurahisha watu kufanya mambo kwa sababu unasukumwa kufanya mambo kwa sababu labda unataka kujipendekeza that is not how we need to do things we need to do things because we are open minded to what we are doing who doesn't know that serving the lord is not in vain amo ujui do you know that kumtumikia mungu si bure do you know kukuja kwako kwa ibada tarehe ya leo sio bure bwana amejesha asifiwe leo tumeanza mwaka vizuri sana eh jana kabla mwaka uingie tukaona manyunyu ya mvua ishara kwamba mungu yu pamoja na sisi ishara ni kwamba hata neno lenye tumezunguzia bwana amelinyunyishia maji yake na hilo neno litakuwa Alafu leo asubuhi tunaamka na mvua. Mwili unapenda nini? Mwili utasikia raha kwa amuka na kubeba mavuli ama unasikia kujinyorosha kwa blanket? Kujinyorosha kwa blanket. But why have we come? We have come not because tumesukumwa na yote. Nimeingia hapa nikapata dada yangu missionary. Ako chonjo, amesimama. Anasema gate inafungulia saa ngapi niingie? Hakuna mtu amesukuma eh. Tumekuja kwa sababu tunampenda Mungu. Bwana amejesha asifiwe na tunajua sio bure kumtumikia Bwana. Hata leo hii ungeamka. 
Na amke tu kwenda shughuli zake. Na amwe tu hata kusema nitaka. Kuna mtu anaweza sukuma wewe? Kuna mtu atakulazimisha kwa lolote? Kwa sababu kumtumikia Mungu tunamtumikia because our minds are clear. Praise the name of Jesus. Our minds are clear. Mimi sihitaji mtu kunishurutisha to, be, to preach the word of God. Hapana. Sihitaji mtu yote kunipangia pangia how to be here. Ah, sihitaji hiyo. Mimi mwenyewe ninajua hata saa hii Bwana asiviwe. Hata saa hii malaika wanamwambia Yesu Kristo na ma, yanaandikwa mbinguni. Tazama mtumishi wako mwaminifu ambaye uliita ukutumikie na ninaomba kwamba Mungu itakapofika siku fulani umkumbuke katika maisha yako. I know. I know um, I have all the clear mind of that is what we call being liberal. You do things generously. Praise the name of the Lord. Generously. Wewe amu wako tu kuwa mimi na nione kama utafanya vitu vile ninafanya. Utashtuka. Ndio utasema kumbe pasta wachana na yeye. I'm doing this generously. I'm not doing the cause of anything. Kwa hiari, I make sure I hear from the Lord and prepare the word for you. Na nikikwambia nitakuwa hapa saa 3, nakuwa hapa saa 3. Not because of anything, generously. Hiyo ndio kwa liberal. Open minded. My mind is very clear. Having or showing a broad mind to what you are called to do. Jesus Christ liberates us from sin. That is what Paul is saying the act of liberation being open minded and being set free and generously being assisted to see that this is a sinful way and this is a righteous way depends on Christ himself secondly Jesus Christ delivers us from sin's dominating power Paul is saying that Jesus Christ delivers us from sins dominating power nataka nikwambie hata ukishaokoka bado msukumo wa dhambi na uovu utakuwa na wewe that is why unaona umeokoka na unaweza kuwa na masengenyi We umeokoka na unaweza kuwa na jealousy We umeokoka na unaweza kuwa na ubaya na watu bari ya imaanishi na maisha umeokoka tu bwana asifiwe hello mkristo Imagine umeokoka na umejaa lawama. Kula umla umu watu all the times. Oh, 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 oh. Do you know why you are doing that? Unahitaji Mungu akusaidie ili utoke kwa dominating power of sin. And I'm here to say Paul anatusaidia Jesus Christ delivers us from sin's dominating power. The new life's power starts working from inside outside. Hii maisha mapya tunayoishi si kwamba ni ya nje ikikuja ndani inaanzia ndani ikienda nje Christians are brand new people on the inside hallelujah brand new people on the inside are Christians the holy spirit gives them new life and they are not the same any more the very moment you give your life to Jesus you are not the same any more we are not reformed or rehabilitated Eh? Unajua church history ina mambo yake. Tangu Yesu Kristo afuke dunia hii. Kuna kitu kinaitwanga historia ya kanisa. Na historia ya kanisa tumepigania kwa sababu kulikuwa na dominance ya Roman Catholicism which was partly like a government like authority and again covering itself like a church thing. Na ikafika wakati na walikuwa na mambo wengine wa kusema kwamba priests and the, 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 the other people are totally different. Ya kwamba hata priest ndiye anakusaidia uonane na Mungu. <laughs> Kati priest ndiye anakusaidia. Priest akisema unaenda hell unaenda hell. Ndio naona hata mpaka saa hii muta kikufa wanakuja wanamwekea maji. It is like wanafikiria hiyo maji na saidia muta. Hiyo maji haiwezi peleka mtu popote. Kinachopeleka mtu binguni kuokoka unaokoko ukiwa mzima hivi hata tukuombea tusema tu kwamba Mariamu ombea watakatifu atuombea mwenye neema kumbuka huyu haiwezi okoa mtu kinachokoa sasa ikazeta kinaitwa reformation watu wengine wakapata biblia kama akina Martin Luther 
wakaangalia ndani ya bila sema hey salvation sio maneno ya matendo salvation sio mambo ya kupitia kwa watu salvation ni kwa neema kwa njia ya imani na wakaandika resolutions na kusema no hii mambo yanaendelea sio sawa Yesu hakukufa tuendelee kuwa wafungwa wa sheria Yesu alikufa tuwekwe huru kwa neema yake hapo ndiye ileta movements kama hizi nyuna sikianga reformed umeshasikia kwa movements zile tuwa reformed reformed na umeshagundua unaweza kuwa ndani ya reformed but you are not reformed hello unajua unaweza kuwa ndani ya reformed but you are not reformed what i'm talking about is not being reformed ah uh-uh. because being reformed is another thing i'm not talking about mtu kukuwa tu reformed because hapo you can just be reformed na kumbe kuna ile change haijafanyika ndani ya maisha yako that is not what i'm talking about i'm not talking about just being rehabilitated no rehabilitation nimeshaona rehabilitation take for example hapa Eldoret pale kamkunji tuna mahali ambapo ninaonanga watoto chokorao wanashikwa na wanawekwa pale na malengo ni kwamba watoto wale wabadilike wao watoto wazuri bali nimeshaona mtoto anapelekwa pale na ananyamaza anatulia anakaa day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 baada ya wiki moja anatoroka anaruta na kuwa chokora kwa barabara so i'm not talking about being rehabilitated i'm talking about a step where jesus christ comes up with his power na ile dominating power to sin anakuondolea jina la yesu lipewe sifa at salvation or conversion We are not merely turning over a new leaf. We are beginning a new life under a new master. A new life, totally new life. This should bring a whole new order. Did you hear that? It should bring totally a new order of creative energy that is begun with Christ Jesus. There is a new covenant. Hallelujah. Unaingia katika agano jipya. Na unajua tukisema covenant ni kwamba haivunjiki. You enter into a new covenant. You enter into a new perspective. You enter into a new body and I'm here to say you also enter into a new church. Bwana majesha pesa sifa. Unaingia mpaka kwa kanisa mpya. Linaitwa mwili wa Kristo. Kanisa ambalo Yesu Kristo akija hautaona likiitwa Baptist. Haukuona likiitwa whatever ni kanisa ambalo ni la wote walioingia katika ile agano jipya na sote tutaimba wimbo mpya katika Jerusalem mpya na Bwana Yesu milele na milele you enter into a new church this is entirely a new order of all creation under Christ's authority it requires a new way of looking at all people and all creation bwana asifiwe it brings a new perspective whereby you can look at new people and the creation with a new perspective in your minds you can read for yourself colossians chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 ambaye inasema kwamba that has come to you in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you had it and truly understood God's grace. Verse 7 says you learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant who is faithful minister to Christ on our behalf. Hii mimi nikiangalia nyuma ninajua inamaanisha nini? Safari hii nimetembea na Yesu. Mimi nilipookoka na wanangu wa Kristo wakisema kwamba oh ati mimi tangu niokoke hakuna yule amenishika mkono, hakuna yule amenilea, hakuna yule amenifanyia. Mimi muhubiri aliponihubiria injili alinihubiria Yesu na nikapokea Yesu ndani ya maisha yangu na yakaenda alifikiria ameubiria watoto hakujua kwamba ameubiria watu wenye wamesikia na akaenda kidogo akapatana na kanisa ambalo lilikuwa tayari watu wamekusanyana pamoja watu wazima na unajua pastor ukitaka kuanza kanisa na upate watu wakubwa unaona kwamba sasa hiyo ndiyo kanisa na akaendelea kukwama nao mimi niliwachwa kiwanja sifo salim niliamka chini nikaenda nyumbani kaambia mamangu mimi nimeokoka akasema kuokoka ndio nini Sio tuuliza sisi watu wakubwa mimi nikaambia mimi nimeokoka 
Na nikakaa hapo nikaanza kusema sema asante Mungu umeniokoa. Bwana asifiwe. Amen amen. Kenye kilifuatia Jumapili iliyofuata ilikuwa mwaka mpya 1988. Asubuhi nilienda Sisfo Stadium penye nilipokea Yesu mwenyewe. Nimeenda tena kutafuta Yesu wangu hapo. Kenye nilipata si kuona muhubiri akikuja. Kile nilipata ni wale vijana tulikuwa tunacheza na wao. Nikajiangalia angalia hapo hata Biblia zina. Sina yote nilikutukaratasi tu kidogo nimepoa ya mambo ya Mungu. Na hapo nikafikiria fikiria nikaomba omba maombi yangu yenye Mungu alinisaidia nikarudi nyumbani. Sande iliyofuata tena nilikuja. Niliendea nipoona kwamba ya nini inaendelea mimi mwenyewe nikajipatia nafasi ya kuongoza watu. <laughs> Kaanza kusanya watoto. Kaambia haleluya Bwana asifiwe tunaenda binguni. Na nikaanza. Nikaanza kutafuta karatasi yote nikipata karatasi yote naongea maneno ya Mungu siweki chini. Nikaanza kuandika tu notes yangu chini. For God so love the world mistari na kariri. Na naanza kueleza watoto, nikasanya watoto, nikaanza kukuza Sunday school. Nina watu mpaka leo wenye nilifundisha hiyo Sunday school pale social hall in Eldoret. They are there. Eh? Mwingine ndiye amekatalia pombe sana na kuanga hiyo senda wesa anaitwa Odenyo. Na muombe anga sana. Lakini kila nikiingia hapa anasemanga mwalimu wangu. Mwalimu wangu ulinifundisha. Na namwambia Odenyo lazima uachane na pombe. Ufuate njia za Mungu. Nina watu waliofuata. Pastor wangu alijua baadaye. Aliambiwa baadaye Unajua ile kazi ulianza pale ni kazi ya maana sana. Kuna watoto wenye ulipea neno wangali wakapo mpaka leo. Ndiye akakuja kunipata pale nimefundisha Sunday school zaidi ya watu hamsini. Wanaendelea watoto wanafuata wanaimba nyimbo za Mungu and children are good. Bora wape tu mwelekeo wenyewe wanakupa tu vitu, wanakupa nyimbo, wanakupa nini. And I grew up those children. Ndio baadaye nikashika line ya kufuata sasa vile unaweza pata pasta akusaidie, akuongoze, akuelekeze mbele. Na kuambia ya kwamba ukiwa ndani ya Kristo there is new order in your life. Na hiyo new order ikiingia sometimes na umwamini Mungu na utumainie Mungu atakusaidia utakuwa. Wewe mwenyewe ndio unachaguanga tu kurudi nyuma na kuanguka kwa dhambi na kuacha mambo ya Mungu. You can stand and stand and stand and live for Jesus. I have a question. Does your life reflect this new perspective? Je, maisha yako yanaonyesha huu upya the new identity the new perspective in Christ Jesus finally i'm saying Jesus Christ restores us into a new relationship with God thank you for that amen Jesus Christ restores us into a new relationship with God imagine mojapo ya kitambulisha ama utambulishaji mpya ambao tunapata ni kurejeshwa katika uhusiano na Mungu Baba yetu. Nimekuwa nikisoma asubuhi ya leo vile dhambi iliingia. Shetani ni mkora na ibilisi ni muongo. Na ibilisi amekuwa na wivu na sisi wanadamu. Mungu ameumba dunia mzuri yenye watu wake wanataka waishi ndani. Genesis chapter 3. Biblia inasema now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals yani mujanja shetani alikuwa mujanja kuliko wanyama wote wa mbinguni he said to the woman munga ameambia adam ya kwamba nimekumba katika shamba la eden na uishi maisha mazuri hapo kifo hakuna magonjwa hakuna hata haijasikika njaa ni kuwepo hakuna njaa huko munga ameweka kwa shamba la eden muishi vizuri bwana asifiwe Yaani usalama wote uko na imagine ibilisi na ukora na ujanja na uongo wake. Hanakuja na maneno kama yeye anasema kwamba he said to the woman na akaangalia yule ile nafasi rahisi. Badala aende Adam mwenye ameambiwa na Mungu, anakuja to the woman mwenye yeye aliambiwa maneno na Mungu. Na anakuja mwenye mwenye aliambiwa na Bwana yake. Anakuja anamwambia kwamba he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? and the main word ni hiyo neno naona really say bwana asifiwe mwaka mpya are you ready for the new year ukiona mtu anakuja karibu na wewe na anakuja na persuasive languages terms kama hizi jaribu kuwa mwerevu na yeye usifike tu shetani alikuja ati kweli munga did god really say Yana anarusha neno paka linaingia lina kwa 
Mimi ninahubiri neno la kukupa uzima. Na unakutana pale na mtu anakwambia, "Hilo neno kweli linaweza kupatiana uzima." Chungana na maswali ya aina hiyo mwaka 2024. Ukitaka kwenda mbele. Ukitaka kwenda mbele chungana hiyo maneno. Did God really say? How I wish Adam angemwambia, "Ndio." Mungu alisema. Eh? Ivo angesema Mungu alisema. Na akimuuliza umejuaje alisema mume wangu Adam aliniambia Mungu alisema. Hatungekuwa na ishida. Na kuanzia siku hiyo tabu ikaingia duniani. Nimeona mateso mengi yakiingia duniani. Ninaona anamwambia verse 4 you will not eh, certainly die. Unajua shetani akisha capture mawazo yako. Kwa sababu <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Kitu kingine unasali kufanya 2024 jiepushe na mazungumzo yenye aina faida. Alo maneno Biblia inaitanga sangine maneno ya kimzaa. Maneno ya kimchezo. Sisi tumeokoka tuna new identity. Tunaongea tu point to point. Anakuja hapa anamwambia kwamba unajua hawa alikubali kupiga na shetani story. Ndiye akafika mahali akaanza akajua huyu sasa nimeengage mazaa akasema you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman for God knows that when you eat ye ni muongo analeta uongo when you eat you will be opened and you will be like god sasa analeta persuasive words at utakuwa kama mungu verse 6 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it immediately after that the bible says then their eyes were opened Shetani ni mukora ni mujanja na tumkemee na tubambane na yeye mwakampia. Saila anakuja na maneno ya kudanganya ni mtamu sana. Immediately walipokula lile tunda their eyes were opened. Hapo ndiyo naonanga sasa unaanza kusema I wish I knew. I wish ningelijua. Sasa I wish na umesha kula. And from there unaona tabu zinaanza kufuatana shida kwa shida bado Mungu anampenda mwanadamu anaweka mpango ya kuhakikisha kwamba anamvalisha at least ngozi ya kumfunika uchi wake na hata hivyo baada ya kufanya hivi anasema kwamba lakini from now kifo kimeingia kila mwanamke kwanza akalaani nyoka utakula unatembea ukigwaruzwa na mavumbi kila saa sema melani akarudi akasema kwamba nayo mwanamke kwa sababu ulikubali kushauriwa na shetani kwa uchungu utapata watoto na utakuwa chini ya mtawala wa mume wako diwale na diwe maisha yako haikuwa hivyo from the beginning haikuwa hivyo na akasema mwanaume na wewe ulikosa kusimama kwa nafasi yako utafanya kazi kwa jasho utakula utakaa ndani ya miba ya michongoma na kuumia na kuteseka na all men hata ukijaribu vaa nini lazima utoe jasho mwaka 2024 be ready to work kiwa mwanaume mwenye unaogopa tumvue inanyesha utaumia hata mvue kinyesha ba makabuti enda kazi go and work kwa sababu hiyo order ni sisi tuliruhusu ingie eh? na wanawake ladies who are here kina dada wenye mko kwa nyumba ya Mungu submit to your husbands eh? hata kama mna equality submit to their authority na Mungu atawasaidia praise the name of the lord Saba ya maneno yote ni sisi tuliruhusi yafanyike. Tulifungua milango kwa hiyo. Na Mungu wa Israeli atatusaidia. Ilipoingia hii maneno yote, na ukiangalia ni tabu juu ya tabu. Eh? Ninaona death ikiwa pronounce. Verse 19 of chapter 3 of Genesis. Inasema by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you will return. Uogope kufa, usiogope kufa, kifo kipo. Halo? Na hata akina akina hitaji hodi. Akitaji sema, naona ngo wengine wanajaza sema mimi ni mdogo. Hata wadogo wanaendaga. Wakatikati wanaendaga. Si wazee pekee wanaenda. Kwa nini? Mungu akasema ulitoka mavumbini na mavumbini utaru. Bwana asifiwe watu wa Mungu. Mwaka ndio huu Mungu amekupa. The best you can do to make your one serve the Lord. Wacha uhesabiki. 
miongoni mwa wale walimtumikia Mungu. Na hayo maneno yakaendelea na hizo tabu zote kuanzia hapo unaona ni shida zinafuatana shida juu ya shida. But I have good news from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All the way to chapter 6. Jesus Christ restores us into a new relationship with God. Tunaposhikana na Yesu tunapata new identity. Our sins are cleared. The blood of Jesus blots away and makes us righteous. We are no longer God's enemies or strangers or foreigners to him. Sisi si wageni tena, sisi ni wa Mungu. As a result, we have the privilege. Tell your neighbor you have the privilege. As a result of this we have the privilege. What is the privilege of encouraging others to do the same and thus we are those who have the ministry of reconciliation. Ndio unaona Paulo anasema as a result of that tumepewa huduma ya upatanisho. We are reconciled to God and we are given the ministry of reconciliation. Na akasisitiza aka akasema kwamba sio tu huduma ya upatanisho nasi ni mabalozi. Sisi ni mabalozi wa Bwana Yesu. We are the ambassadors of Christ Jesus. So jiambie mimi ni balozi wa Kristo. Jiambie tena mimi ni balozi wa Kristo. Exactly, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. An ambassador is an official representative of his country in another country. Did you hear that? Balozi ni mtu anakilishanga taifa lake kwa taifa lingi? Wezi pelekwa kama sahi rais wetu mheshimiwa Ruto amepeleka balozi wa Uganda. Yeye awe wa kuwakilisha Kenya Uganda. Na anapokaa ndani ya Uganda, anasema nimepata Uganda ni mzuri, mimi sitawahi rudi Kenya. Uwezi fanya hivyo. Unakaanga tu huko, lakini we ni mwakilishi wa Kenya. Unatakana uzumze mambo ya Kenya. Sisi ni mabalozi wa Kristo Yesu katika dunia hii. Sisi sio wenyeji kwa dunia hii. Tuko tu hapa kuwakilisha Kristo Yesu. Jina lesu lipewe sifa. As believers we are Christ ambassadors send with Christ's message of reconciliation to the world. Exactly. Wewe pele kwako na rais wa nchi hii kwa nchi ya Tanzania. Na ukienda Tanzania unaenda kuimba nyimbo za Tanzania. Nini inafuata? Tarudishwa immediately hapa. Nitakana ukiwa Tanzania unaimba nyimbo za Kenya. Bwana asifiwe sana. Huyo ndiyo balozi. Na unaakilisha Kenya. Huwezi enda huko kama balozi wa Kenya na unaanza kusema Kenya ni mbaya. Kenya hata msijaribu kuja huko. Ni nchi mbaya, hapana. Unasemanga Kenya ni mzuri. Hakuna nchi kama Kenya. Na maandiko yanasema hivi mwana wa Mungu na sisi ni mabalozi wa Yesu Kristo. Lazima kila wakati tuseme Yesu ni mzuri. Praise the name of the Lord. Lazima tuseme kanisa ni mzuri kama mabalozi wa kanisa. Bwana majesha asifiwe. Usipatikane mwaka huu wewe unaingia kwa ile maneno ya kusema kama hata kanisa haina maana. Kanisa ina maana. Kama si kanisa kwani tungekuwa ndio tumesimama wapi? Kanisa ina maana. Na tuka hapa tunasema kanisa ni mzuri. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kanisa ni mzuri kama si kanisa tungekuwa penye tuko leo. Kanisa ni mzuri. Kanisa ni mzuri. Inanikumbusha maneno ya mhubiri moja Nairobi. Nasema tuliingia kanisa tukiwa na matuta kwa vichwa. Na tukakasirika sana. Lakini sio ni ukweli. Tunaingianga na matuta. Kama tumechafuka. Na baadaye Mungu anatusaidia tunaanza kujua kuosha nguo na kupasa. Sasa hiyo si vitu vya kuringa, ni vitu vya kuendelea kwa mabalozi wa ufalme wa Bwana Yesu. Praise the name of Jesus. Na ndio unaona ngo ukiwa umeokoka. Ukiingia ndani ya kanisa na Yesu akungarishi na uchukue huo urembo upeleke kwa dunia Yesu anakugonga zaidi anaruhusu mapepo ikuchape properly huko nje kwa sababu Yesu hakungarisha wewe uende uonyeshe dunia urembo wako alikungarisha ili urembo wako uende kuinua ufalme wa Mungu let me tell you wapendwa kwa upendo wa Bwana unaona hata hii mwito tumeokolewa na Yesu na kusaidiwa na Mungu Mungu atahakikisha hata kama sisi ni maskini tutakuwa hata na pesa Somebody say amen. amen. Tunaokokanga tukiwa maskini, na Yesu anatupa pesa. Tunaokokanga kama hatujui kusoma, Yesu anasaidia tusome. 
hiyo yenye Mungu atafanya kwako ukipelekea dunia shetani atakisha imeharibika na imekusha hata mwaka huu Mungu akikupa pesa kuwa mwaminifu kwa fungu la kumi kwa nyumba ya Mungu kuwa mwaminifu kwa sadaka katika nyumba ya Mungu tolea kazi ya Mungu uwezi kubarikiwa na Mungu na uchukue baraka za Mungu upeleke kwa dunia hiyo ndio mwanzo wa kuisha kwako ninatangaza 2024 Mungu akusaidie na kubariki but hizo baraka lazima zionekane kwa nyumba ya Mungu that is how god will continue blessing you that is how god will continue lifting you up jina la yesu lipesiva we have an important responsibility we are not to take it lightly how could the corinthian believers ndio naona msari wa sita paulo anasema how can you ignore Nema ya ajabu ya wokovu kama waina hii unaweza ignore namna gani wacha nimalizie hapo how can you ignore this hmm? as god's co-workers we urge you not to receive god's grace in vain how can you ignore hii new identity yenye watu wako hawawezi wakakufanyia ni mungu alifanya how can you ignore na akasema kwamba in the time of my favor i had you and in the day of salvation i helped you nana alisaidia tuokoke ni kristo na akasema i tell you somebody say now sema now paul akasema i tell you corinthians now is the time of god's favor catch it for yourself and for your life sasa ndio wakati wa kibali cha bwana Umeanza mwaka mpya sasa ndio kibali cha mwaka wa Bwana. Anasema now is the day of salvation. How can Corinthian believers ignore this? They had the message but they did not let it affect what they said and did. That was the challenge. They did not allow the word of God to affect what they said and did. How often does God's message reach you in vain? How often does it reach you in vain? There is no time like the present to receive God's forgiveness. Don't let anything hold you back from coming to Christ. The right time is now. And the right day is today. I'm saying there is new identity in Christ Jesus. We have new identity. Jesus Christ liberates us from sin. Jesus Christ delivers us from sins dominating power. Mwaka huu mwambie Bwana sinyanyaswi na dhambi tena. Nguvu za dhambi lazima zishindwe. Minyororo ya dhambi ya kunivuruta nyuma na kunisumbua katika imani lazima ishindwe in Jesus name. Finally Jesus Christ he restores us into a new relationship with God. Tunatembea. Maandiko anasema therefore we are new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hilo ndilo neno la Mungu kwa ajili yako na kwa ajili yetu mwaka mpya ambao Bwana ameweka mbele zetu. Hallelujah. Walk and live in a new identity for the glory of Christ Jesus. Mwaka mpya na mambo mapya. Mwaka mpya na mafikira mapya. Mwaka mpya na matendo mapya. Mwaka mpya na maongeo mapya. Mwaka mpya na nafasi mpya ya kumtumikia Bwana. Simama kwa miguu yako tuombe. Ninaomba uh, media team if you can tuimbe huo wimbo nimekuja kusema asante. Kwa sababu ya huu mwaka mpya na nitasikia kushukuru Bwana na nitakupa hiyo nafasa ile hiyo wimbo inaimba wewe ambao umeingia nyumbani mwa Bwana leo takupa nafasi ya kutembea pole pole paka kwa ima dhabau na tutaomba pamoja in the name of Jesus yasiyowezekana kwetu yanawezekana na Mungu kuna wale sahi wanasema Mungu nisaidie hii mambo ya fees nitafanyaje Bwana atakuwezesha kuna wale anasema kwamba sielewi nitaanzia wapi utaona Bwana akifungua njia zake kwa sababu ya kuja kusema asante there is new identity new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord are we ready for the song all right na kama unaweza inua mikono kwa Bwana umwambie asante huyu dada aliimba na moyo wake wote 
tuimbe hivyo na tukuje tuombe pamoja welcome Tumwambie Bwana asante tena, asante kwa mwaka huu mzuri, mwaka mpya ambao Bwana ameweka mbele zetu. Mwambie tu Bwana asante, mwambie Mungu asante, mwambie Bwana asante. Hata nami nasema asante, asante. Sasa sio wakati wa manunguniko tena, ni kuambia tu Bwana asante. Si mwaka wa kuangalia mambo ya nyuma, mama ambaye ametutesa na kutufinyilia, ni wakati wa kusema asante, asante Mungu wangu, asante baba yangu, asante Mungu wa neema, asante Mungu wa rehema, asante kwa wokovu, asante kwa maisha yangu, asante kwa maisha yetu, asante kwa kibali, asante kwa wokovu, asante kwa kila jambo. Baba asante, asante kwa kanisa, asante kwa watoto wako, asante kwa familia zetu, asante Asante mfalme afalme, asante Jehovah ushie milele. Asante kwa ulinzi wako, asante kwa mwaka mpya, asante kwa mipango mpya, asante kwa mawazo mapya. New identity for 2024. Bana we say thank you, we say thank you, we say thank you. We join our sister to say thank you. Thank you for our children, thank you for our wives, thank you for our husbands, thank you for our families, thank you for our future. We say thank you, we say thank you, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say asante. Asante baba, asante baba, asante baba. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus Christ. Asante. Baba kwa jina lake Yesu Kristo na kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Ninakuja machoni pako asubuhi ya leo. Bwana ni asante kwa tarehe moja Januari 2024 kutupatia tena mwaka mwingine. Mfalme afalme nataka kushukuru kwa hawa watoto wako ambao Jehova umeweka siri mzuri sana kwa mioyo zao ya kwamba tukuje tuseme asante. Baba kwa mioyo yetu yote tunasema asante kwa mwaka huu. Tunasema asante. Tunasema asante. Asante kwa hii Januari, asante kwa February, asante kwa March, asante kwa April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. We thank you very much for October. We thank you for November. We thank you even for December. Na tunatangaza hivi. Hakuna mwezi wowote utatawala maisha yetu. Sisi tutatawala hizi miezi zote. Tutatawala hizi siku zote. Tutatawala hizi weeks zote. Tunatawala the hours. 
tutatawala the seconds tutatawala the minutes in the name of Jesus Christ hiyo ndio sababu ulimuumba Adam and Eve na ukaweka katika shamba la Eden na ukawabariki na ukaambia kwamba wamiliki ukawaambia watawale we are in charge to control hatutaungana na wanaolia mwaka huu hatutaungana na wale wanalalamika ati wewe uchumi wewe nini sisi tutatembea katika identity yetu identity ya kujuana na Kristo identity ya kujuana na mapenzi ya Mungu hicho ndicho kitambulisho chetu nataka kuwaombea hawa watoto wako kila mmoja unamfahamu kwa jina lake ninaombea hawa akina baba siku ya leo uwakumbuko uwasaidie naombea hawa akina mama siku ya leo uwakumbuko uwasaidie watoto wetu wavulana kwa wasichana ninawaombea bwana wamejua siri ya kukimbia nyumbani wamejua siri ya kukimbia kwa kanisa baba uwe pamoja na wao natangaza mwaka wa baraka tangaza mwaka wa kibali mwaka wa ushindi udhaifu wote ambao unaweza kuwa katika hali ya uhusiano wao na wewe baba ushughulikie kwa sababu you are the one who creates new identity in us oh my father deliver us from all kinds of sin dominance in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus Christ we say akuna dhambi ita dominate maisha yetu we are set free and we are liberated by Christ Jesus to walk in you and we are reconciled back as sons as children sisi ni wana wa Mungu tunakuita aba father yani baba yetu utusaidie utukumbuke tu wale wanatazama kwenye media manyumbani na ulimwenguni kote all our online viewers we speak a blessing to them in the name of Jesus we speak that Abba father you bless them the year 2024 remember them to walk in new identity in Christ Jesus thank you father for doing this we we bless you as a church because you are our father asante baba wetu tunairisha ibada hii kwa kusema baba wetu liye juu mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe ufalme wako uje mapenzi yakatimizwe hapa duniani kama uko juu mbinguni utupe leo riziki yetu utusamehe makosa yetu kama nasi tunavyosamea leo tukosea usitutie majaribuni bali tuoke na yule mwovu kwa kuwa falme ni wako na nguvu na utukufu hata milele Amen. Neema ya Bwana Yesu Kristo na mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu Baba na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu ukae nasi sasa na hata milele. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Ubarikiwe kwa mwaka mpya. Amen. Amen. Amen.